Welcome back everybody to Reptile Reality TV. I want to thank everybody for all the positive comments that you've left for me. I'm getting lots of questions, lots of requests, um, especially to highlight the animals that are in my collection. Now that's a huge part of why I'm making these videos. So if you haven't seen the animal that you're interested in or that you're waiting for, don't worry, I'm getting to it. I'm going to highlight all the stuff in my collection and at some point eventually you'll be able to see exactly what you're looking for. So anyway, that being said, thank you everybody. I really appreciate it and let's get on with it. This week I'm going to highlight scrub pythons. Now for those of you that know me, I've been working with scrub pythons for a really, really long time. Scrub pythons are the snake that actually drove me to start traveling and to try to start importing animals for myself. Uh, they, you know, they're coming into Florida, they're coming to all the big dealers. I'm on the West Coast in California. I had a really hard time getting priority, fighting for all these, you know, really cool scrub pythons over the internet and competing with all the, all the local boys, you know, that are over there, um, maybe personal friends and whatnot of all the importers. So I went out after it myself. And um, in doing so, I've acquired some really special animals. So scrub pythons, that's this week. Start off with this one up here. It's a really cool snake. It is some sort of highland type. It doesn't really fit any into any of the, the known localities. He's actually a really nice animal, but a lot of these snakes are very cage aggressive. So you want to make sure that you not always want to just reach right in and pull them out because they're not actually always cool with that idea. And this is a big snake, not a small one. But this is a wild caught. He was already an adult when I got him, but he's actually put on a lot of size. But he's always been really cool. Got a little bit of cypress mulch on there. Now these snakes can get really big. This is a patternless something. Um, it's got some orange banding on the side that you can see. It's faded a little bit, but there's some orange nicks there that are a little bit similar to Oxabil. Some people that I've posted these photos say that this is actually a patternless Oxabil. What it is, I don't really know, but it's a really great animal. Just fed last night. So I'm not going to handle this one too much. But that's a big snake. And for a wild caught animal to be so, so easy going with handling, that's a big plus for me. So that's the first one I'm going to show you guys. And I plan on breeding all of these at some point. Um, these don't come in that, that often, especially something like this is is very very rare to receive so I figure over time with um, you know with my shipments coming in periodically I hope that at some point I'll find a nice match for this animal so we'll give this guy a break like I said I just fed yesterday so I don't like to handle my guys too much but just a gentle handling like I do it's not gonna be too big of a deal Now scrub pythons have quite a bite. I took a really bad bite to my hand at one point. So you have to really respect these guys, just like retics and berms and everything else. They act like that, everything's fine, but you just have to kind of be aware of what they're capable of doing. But, um, you know, that being said, it's, it's not the snake for everyone. They get kind of big, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a handful at times. All right, now for this next one. This one was hatched here. I bred and, and hatched a clutch of barnecks here. I've done it a, several times, and this is one of my holdbacks. The strange thing about this animal, other than the fact that it's really beautiful, is that even as a hatchling right out of the egg, it would not bite 
Now most pythons are real defensive out of the egg just just by nature that's the way they are and when I have pythons that are that way I usually know I'm going to have a pretty easy time of getting them to feed. This one out of the entire clutch was not defensive at all. It was very very shy and it started feeding right like clockwork like all the others and this snake has never shown any bit of defensive nature I can reach in and grab it somehow it knows the difference between a warm hand and a warm rat and this guy is just awesome I had a waiting list and I allowed people to choose the prettiest animals you know pair by pair they got picked off and I just like this guy because his attitude was so nice he may not have been the most beautiful one of the clutch but I'll tell you what I've seen some of the clutch and this is one of the prettiest ones and it kind of started off as the ugly duckling and it ended up uh, being really really beautiful and I love the I love the the calm attitude of this guy it's really really nice animal and it's nice to be able to pull out animals that uh, that are are opposite of what you know the general consensus is oh scrub pythons I really like them but they're really defensive and they're real bitey well that's not always the case especially using this guy as an example it's really nice to throw people off pull a nice animal like this out so I understand that most of you guys like to watch people get bit on camera but it ain't gonna happen with this one <laughs> sorry good for me bad for you maybe so we'll get this guy back. And just ate yesterday as well. So I'm not going to handle him too much. Scrub pythons do really well on small meals. Do a small meal every couple of weeks. That's the way that they do the best. My babies, when I hatch and I'm working with babies, I like to just feed them every week. Nothing too big. And then at some point, you know, they get five or six feet and I really slow them down. I just feed them once every like two weeks and they do really, really well like that. I don't like to feed them meals that have them stuffed, you know, and, and just sitting there trying to digest these huge, huge meals. It's far better to feed them just moderate and even sometimes small meals on a little bit of a longer duration. They do the best that way. Now this other one was an import. And don't ask me why, I have a whole bunch of scrub pythons that are just really mellow. I don't hold these guys very much, it's not something that I had to actually get them used to being held. But that's just the way they came. This is also a wild caught from Erie and Jaya, Papua New Guinea. And it's patternless obviously and it is also extremely different it has a pink tongue which is a little bit different than a lot of the other maroke animals that I've been seeing and working with and this one when it came it was just a fresh little baby and it was in shed and it was all dirty and dark and it really didn't look like much and I and I took a close look at it and uh, you know most of my shipments they come in at night time so I, I took a close look at it before I put it away and I thought wow this animal looks patternless it might actually be really cool and it shed and I was really blown away and now that it's you know tripled or quadrupled in size it's getting this really nice gold color to it and there's a lot of tipping black tipping on the scales and it's showing like a net pattern really like this snake it's beautiful and this is a female and I have a male to match that's quite a bit bigger but I'm just hoping to get her up to size and uh, and I think I have a matched pair on this one I got lucky on this so whatever the actual uh, locality is that the, the actual smaller detailed locality is I'm not really sure so that's one and I have another one that's kind of interesting another one kind of a strange one has uh, 
Lots of the pattern on the side is just all missing right here. But again, another, another docile one. They all have a really, really strong feeding response. But once they're out, they kind of get it. They understand. I feed in the cage, so when they're out, they know that they're, they're not going to be fed. But this one was a bit defensive when it first came. It was easily half this size. And um, putting on size really good and looking really great. And uh, really, uh, really happy with these guys, you know. So one thing that importing allows you to do is to, to you know, get first first hand. You know, you're, you're picking through your own shipments of animals. And if you have a really good supplier like I do that has a really good lock on, on Erie and Jaya and has a good supplier out of Marooke, you're going to eventually, you know, over time, you're going to see the little gems like this that are going to show up. And I get the sarongs and the southerns and all the, all the standard stuff. But, um, you know, occasionally some really cool stuff like that shows up. And this is one of them. So that's basically it. That's uh, These are some of the highlights in my scrub python collection. I have a couple others. Um, they, they're not for handling. They're, they're a bit defensive. Uh, some older animals that were imported, not used to you know being in cages and everything else. A little bit of a nightmare to take out. So I'm not going to pull them out. But to be honest with you, the ones that I did pull out are the gems of my collection. Really proud of these guys. So that's it. Scrub pythons. I do have them available occasionally. If you're interested or looking for something, um, hit me up. They come in every once in a while. And uh, that's it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.